In this video, we'll be installing the VVT on this 2007 Mazda CX-9. You will need to remove your intake and valve cover if you're doing the rear VVT. So the first thing we're going to do is disconnect our negative battery terminal here. It's going to be a 10 millimeter. I'll just loosen this up enough and we can get this to spin and twist right off. Now, if you really want to, and we will, go ahead and disconnect the positive as well because we will be working with fuel. Take all the precautions we can. We'll set this aside as well. So now moving forward from our battery, we have our intake or our fresh air duct here held in by a few 10 millimeter bolts. We'll go ahead and remove those. Now this third 10 millimeter bolt here is actually down to the bracket to our air filter housing. So you can take this bolt off or the one down lower. We're just going to take the entire bracket off. Next we're going to work on our air filter or our air intake box here. If we follow this back here, we have a plug. On the bottom of our plug, we have a little security or a little red tab on there. We're going to have to pull out. So we're going to use a pick tool. Just get under there and pull that red tab out. And we can reach underneath, press the tab, and separate our plug. If we follow this harness straight down, we have a little tab holding this harness into our air box. We're just going to pull that straight up. and we'll set that harness aside. So now what we're going to do is open our air filter box here. We're going to push these two metal tabs inward and that will open our air box. So now because we are going to remove this whole air intake tube, we're going to loosen up our 10 millimeter back here or our Phillips for our band clamp and we'll remove the top of our air filter box. Now to remove our box, we've undid our clips. We're going to lift that backside straight up. We have three tabs in front. We're going to lift this air intake up and pull it out of those tabs. Because we loosened up our band clamp, we can now twist and pull the top of our air filter box off. So the next thing we're going to disconnect is this hose going into our air intake. I'm just going to pull that straight out. And we can set that aside. So now if we lift the rest of our air intake tube, you'll see one hard line here, which is going to be clipped in by a little security lock back here. We're going to need to remove this line. So we're going to open up that clip just by pulling it out and forward. and then remove our line. Now if we follow our air intake tube back just before our throttle body, under these hoses here, we have another band clamp. This is going to be a 10 millimeter. Go ahead and loosen that up. With that loosened up, we can then work our intake tube off. So now we're going to remove our engine cover. To do that, we're going to need to open or remove our oil fill cap. I'm just going to twist that, take that out, set it aside. I'm going to grab a hold of your engine cover pull it straight up. Now on the back side it will be held in place by two grommets and two pins. Once you have that off, you can go ahead and put your oil cap back on and set your engine cover aside. Now we're going to remove our air filter and air intake box. It's held in on the bottom by two pins into two rubber grommets. 
I'm just gonna grab a hold of this box, pull it straight up. So now underneath our throttle body, you'll see a bracket mounted to our throttle body and to the block. We're gonna remove the top bolt connecting it to the throttle body itself. It's gonna be a 5 16 bolt. So now moving directly above our throttle body, we have a few hoses here, a little regulator, and a 10 millimeter nut. We're gonna remove that nut and these pieces and just move them out of the way slightly so we have a little more access to work back here in our intake. There's your nut. All right, we have one more on the bottom, on the back side here. All right, we're just gonna pull this straight back. Try not to bend these lines too much. They are fuel. We're just gonna sit them aside so we have a little bit more access up here. If we want to, and you want to, we can put your nuts back in place so we don't lose them. So now our throttle body has an electronic plug right here with a security lock on it. We're gonna pull that lock up and reach in there, press the tab, and pull that plug right off. All right, so continuing with the throttle body, we have another line right here with a little lock on it. So what we're gonna do is pop that lock up. Before we go any further, we're going to take a couple of rags and just sit them down in this area. And with that lock all the way up, we're going to pull that line back. And sit that line aside. Okay, so now working towards removing our intake. We have a harness right here that's connected into the intake. And we have this large harness across the front that's also connected to the intake. We have some plastic clips holding them in place. So with our panel tool, we'll go ahead and pop those clips out. There's one there. And just move that harness aside. That'll gain us access to these bolts here. Moving across the front, we have another one here. And you should have, our harness is actually exposed. The uh, shielding that's supposed to be around this is missing, but you should have one, two, three clips across the front of your intake. You can go ahead and remove those now. So now if we look at the top of our intake and look straight in the back, we have one more bolt kind of facing the driver's side corner. We come in with a few extensions, and again, a 5 16 So now coming across the side and front of our intake here, we have a few bolts. They're gonna be 5 16 We're gonna go ahead and take these out. On this side here, two more. And then right up top here, we have one more. OK, 
Okay, so now with our bolts removed across the front, we can start to work off our intake. Now at this point, remember your throttle body is gonna come along with it. We still have two hoses in the very back we need to disconnect. So once you get your intake far enough forward that you can get to one or both of your hoses, go ahead and disconnect them as soon as you can. Well, right now I have access to this rear hose straight back here. Okay, so this hose back here, we were going to disconnect on the hose clamp, but it actually came out of our valve cover. So we have an electrical connection right underneath this hose, and we can't actually see it. So we're going to go ahead and remove this hose. Okay, so here's our plug. Go ahead and disconnect that. Okay, now we can continue to work out our intake. Again, when you have your intake out this far, you have an open engine. Do not drop anything in here. If you need to at this point, just to be safe, take some rags and go ahead and fill these holes as soon as possible. That way you don't drop any bolts or any debris down into your engine. If you, only, if you can only get to a couple right now, that's fine. Just be very careful. All right, so our intake is almost ready to come out. Still working towards one hose. is right back here. I think at this angle here we can get a long pair of needle nose in here and remove that clamp. line to free up. And there we go. Okay, now our intake should be free to come out of the vehicle. And we can just lift our intake right up and out. So now that we have our intake out of the way, we can fill up these last few holes here with some rags. Just don't push these too far in where you can't get them out. Okay. So now that we've gotten this far, we have access to our rear valve cover. We're gonna take out our coils in the back here. You can see we have three coils, three plugs. We're going to start with our locks on our plugs here. We're going to need to push our locks open. And then we can push the tab on our plugs and pull those off.
last one back here. Between our coils here, you can see we have another plug. Go ahead and remove that. All right, so now we can remove our coils. It's going to be 5 16 bolts. With our bolts removed, pull them straight up and out. Right, so they're on a little O-ring holding them in place. So what we'll use is a small screwdriver and just help pop those straight up. We'll do that to all three. Okay, so we need to get our valve cover off, which means we need to get to these nuts or bolts. So we're going to have to take our harness off of these studs. We're just going to pull straight up. Okay, coming right across, we have one more over here. Okay, now at this point, if you need to, you can disconnect your injectors. This will allow you a little bit more room with this harness. So now straight back, our harness for our coils is also attached right here. So we're going to unplug this. should be your oxygen sensor. So now if we follow this harness around, it's plugged into our VVT here. We'll go ahead and disconnect that. So now if you follow the harness, we just unplugged your VVT. We'll go back down behind the valve cover to a blue plug with a white top on it. All right, that should be your other oxygen sensor. Remove the entire plug from the block. Should be a clip. All right. And now we're going to disconnect the plug. So it was in the vehicle, like this. All right, so following this harness, again, around the valve cover, we have one more attachment point back here. I'm just going to slide that up and off the stud. That just broke. Plastic in these vehicles are really fragile. If we follow that harness up a little further, you can give it a little tug and feel. There's one more point right here. All right there. This is our last point. 
we can actually take this harness and just pull it forward and we can do the same on the other side following the small harness all the way to the back corner of your valve cover you have one more point I'm not sure if this is factory or not but it's actually taped I'm just going to get in there with a the small flathead screwdriver and see if I can just break that tape all right, so now across the front of our valve cover here, we have a whole bunch of studs. They're gonna be 10 millimeter nuts. We'll take those out now. All right, so we brought out a little bit more than we bargained for on this one. Looks like they're all coming out that way. All right, so all of our nuts took the studs and the bushings out with them, which is not at all ideal. All right, so now on the back of our valve cover, we have four more 10 millimeters. Take these out. Then we have one more right here. So then right behind our VVT, we have one more. Now with all of our bolts removed from our valve cover, we can come over here to the passenger side between the valve cover and the lower intake. We'll use a pry bar and pop up that valve cover. Now if you're using a pry bar here like we are, you don't want to go in too far. You don't want to do damage to where that gasket sits. If you're going to be doing this job, you want to be replacing your valve cover gasket. In our case, we're going to be reusing this gasket. You 
Okay, our valve cover free. Go ahead and work our gasket free. And lift our valve cover right out. All right, so now that we have our valve cover out of the way, we have clear access to our rear VVT. It's gonna be held in by one bolt. It's gonna be a 5 16 bolt. We'll remove that bolt now. Do not drop this bolt into the motor. So now that we have our bolt removed from our VVT, we're gonna come in the long flathead screwdriver, a little bit of pressure right here, just push against that bracket straight up. And just pull it right out. So now to install our new VVT, before we put it in place, we're going to grab a little bit of oil from our camshaft or in where the VVT sits, put it right around that O-ring. And we're going to take that, push it right into place. All right, we're going to get down to about the O-ring, and it's going to give us a little resistance. All right, once you have your VVT seated all the way down, meaning your bracket is down to the mounting point, flush, you can go ahead and put your bolt back in. So at this point here, we're ready to reinstall our valve cover. You can see that our gasket is already installed because we are reusing our old gasket. This isn't normally recommended, but for us, our gasket is in great shape. We just cleaned it up a little bit, made sure there was no dirt and debris in behind it. We reinstalled our gasket, made sure there was no nicks, and it was in great shape to put back in the vehicle. So before we put our valve cover in place, you want to make sure that your surface where your gasket meets and sits on is free and clear of any debris. There's no high spots or any dirt or grime left there before you put your valve cover on. Now we've done that. So let's go ahead and center up our valve cover with our VVT, considering that's the highest part. Get that lined up and lower down our valve cover. Now there is a gasket around your VVT. It's making a nice tight watertight seal there. So you will have to give it a little pressure downwards to get it to seat against the head. Once you have it fully seated front and back, we can start to reinstall our bolts. We're gonna start with this one here. right along the back here. up a little further right behind the VVT.
Okay, now that we have them all in and snugged up, we'll come back and torque them all down. We're going to torque our valve covers down to 50 inch foot pounds. Now that we have our valve cover torqued down, we can start to reinstall our harness clips back on the studs. We'll start in this corner here and work our way across. And our harness naturally wants to flip backwards here. So while we're here, we'll just plug in our VVT. And we have two connections back here. One will be our O2 sensor, and the other will go to our intake. And while we're in this area here, we'll connect this small harness right to this stud. And on the driver's side, we have this harness here, which will go to our ignition coils and this plug on our valve cover here. All right, so we have ignition coil, ignition coil, and ignition coil plug ready to go. And this one should go to our intake. So now we're ready to put our ignition coils back in place. Before we do that, we're gonna put a little dielectric grease right on the inside here where it makes contact with the spark plug. Okay, once we have that done, we're going to drop it right in. And we're going to feel a little bit of resistance onto the top of the plug and just push down. We'll go ahead and line up our bolt. Come in and snug that down. Now our plugs for our coils have a little red lock on them. So we're gonna plug in our coil until we hear a click and then push in our lock. We'll do that for the other two. Dielectric grease. Lower it down onto our plug. Line up our bolt. While we snug this up, we'll push down on our coil. Get our plug lined up. Click it in and set our lock. That's the last coil. A little dielectric grease. Push down to our plug. Thread in our bolt. on our plug and our lock. Now that you've removed your intake and you're ready to put it back in the vehicle, we always suggest that you replace your gaskets. So we have here our old gaskets. We're gonna remove them. You can see in front we have our new gaskets. So we'll either use a pick tool or a small pocket flathead screwdriver 
to pop these old gaskets out. You can see we have some oil residue here. So before we put our new gaskets in place, we're gonna give these areas here a good clean. We'll also come in with just a little bit of brake clean. Okay, we'll flip this up and just give these areas where the gaskets go a little clean. Now at this point, if you want to, you can use some compressed air to blow these dry, but the brake clean will evaporate pretty quickly. Once that's dried up, we'll put our new gaskets in. So now that we have our intake here cleaned, we can go ahead and put our new gaskets in place. So we're going to line up these little tabs here with the tabs on the outside and we'll just press into place. And I want to make sure you press these down all the way evenly. So we'll go across these two times just to make sure. Once we're happy with that one, we'll move on to the next. Same exact process. You can see here that these aren't set in all the way. So we'll just pull this back up and try again. Once you have your gaskets all the way in to their grooves, we're ready to take it to the vehicle. So now before we put our intake onto this surface here with our new gaskets, we're going to clean this area up and make sure we have the best seal possible. So we're going to use a little brake clean, a rag, and lightly with a razor blade. Again, when you do this, even though you have rags in these runners here, you want to pull your debris away from the center. You don't want to drop it in, or at least do the best you can not to.
take a razor blade lightly. Once you're happy with the cleaning of this surface here, we are ready to remove our rags from our runners and put our intake back in place. Okay, so now we have our intake ready to go back in. Pull our rags, again try and pull the debris out. Now we can take our intake and rest it back down into position. Now remember on the back here we have a hose that we'll need to connect. So what we'll actually do is take this hose right off of the intake, plug it down onto the valve cover in the back. And then we'll set our intake in place. So now before we go any further with bolting in our intake or connecting anything else, if you remember we have one plug right around this hose area here. So we're going to lift our intake and angle it a little bit as if we were going to take it back out again. Now here's that plug and it's going to go right underneath this pipe here. So. Connect that back up. Okay, now that we have that plugged in, we'll put this hose back on and put our hose clamp back into place. First thing we're going to do here is actually spin our hose clamp for a little bit easier access. So we'll work our intake backwards and put that hose back in. and reinstall your hose clamp. So now with our intake located, we can put our bolts back in. We're going to have one long bolt. The long bolt is going to go up in the center. All right, you're going to have five other bolts that are going to be the same length, and they're going to go all around the front. So we're just going to drop these into place. We're going to press down and get our intake as far down seated as we can. 
and we'll start to thread in a couple of these bolts. Okay, we're just going to loosely snug them up. I'm going to start them by hand to make sure we're not cross-threading them and we are actually on the holes. Okay, now that we have our bolts just loosely snugged up, just to the point where we were putting downward pressure on them, we are going to come back and torque these down to 80 inch pounds, and we're going to do that in a sequence. So we're going to start here. Top. Back here. And if you decide you want to, you can run back through and just make sure everything is torqued down correctly. Now working outwards towards our throttle body, we have a couple of connections here. One of them is going to be the hose in the back. All right, so we have this fuel style connector with our lock and you can see where it connects in the back here. I'm just going to press that all the way up into that rib. Make sure we're over that rib and then press our lock down and give it a little pull back just to make sure we are locked in place. So now across our throttle body we have our plug here. Our plug is right here also with the lock on it. So we'll press this back into place and press our lock in. Now just above our throttle body we have our bracket with our nuts that we left here so we wouldn't lose them. And this piece here, which will go right back onto the rubber isolators. And we can thread our nuts back on. And tighten those down. So now underneath our throttle body, we have one more bolt holding it to a bracket to the block. Well, the bracket has shifted slightly, so we're just going to use a pry bar, push that bracket up a little bit. And we can tighten that bolt down. And then we have one bolt 
straight back here. Last thing to do here is with this harness, we're going to take it and put that wire clip right back in. Now our vehicle only has one clip right here, which will go into this part of the intake. You should have three, one here, one in the center, and one on the end. Now we'll probably end up putting a couple of zip ties right here, but that's where you would plug yours back in. So now we're going to reinstall our air filter box and our air intake tube here. There are going to be two pins on the bottom of this. We're going to seat straight down into the two grommets there. If you locate the top holes here, it should help you get those two pins relatively close. Once you feel you're there, just push straight down, lock them in. And then up top here, we have three bolts to reinstall. So now moving a little further back, we're going to install our intermediate tube here. You'll see on the back you have a little notch that you're going to need to align with your throttle body. Once we have that aligned, we'll tighten down our band clamp. Now we'll tighten down the band clamp. Now if we lift up this intake tube, we can see we have a port here. We have our hard line here that's going to attach to it. On our hard line, we have a little gray tab. We're going to need to pull that tab open as we push on to this tube. That's going to be your lock. So we'll pull that open seat that tube in, release that lock. Now the last part is our air filter housing top. So what we're going to do is push this right into our tube here. I'm going to line up our notches. And we can set that down. From here, we're going to plug in our sensor. Sensor also has a lock on the plug. Push it straight in and then push your lock in. So now we have one last hose. Push it straight into our tube. And just after that, we have our band clamp. Once we're sure our intake box top here is all the way in, we can tighten down that band clamp. So now for our air filter housing top, we're gonna put these three tabs right into these three slots. I'm gonna push into the driver's side and straight down. 
If you can't get these three tabs lined up, make sure your air filter is fully seated correctly. Once you have your three tabs in front set in and your air filter is nice and tight here, we can pull these two metal clips up and over, pull them to lock in. And the last thing we have here is this clip for our harness, pushes right down into the top of your air filter box. So now to replace our engine cover, we need to remove our oil fill cap. Spin that right out, we can set this aside. To take our engine cover, we're looking for our two little knobs here. We're gonna line them up into that intake we just installed. Easiest thing to do is line up your oil fill in the hole here. It'll put you really close. And give it a little tap down there, one in the bottom corner. Then you can go ahead and reinstall your oil fill cap. So now we can reconnect our battery. First thing we're gonna do is connect our negative terminal. So we're gonna seat that down as far as possible and tighten it up. Give it a little push, make sure it doesn't rotate or spin. It's not loose. We can now move on to the positive. Positive terminal, we're gonna pull this boot back a little bit here. Open that up and do the same thing with our positive. Push it down as far as we can get it. Tighten up that nut. Give it a little push, make sure it doesn't spin, make sure it's not loose. We can pull that boot forward. and cover up that terminal. When only the best will do, demand TRQ. The only company that lets you view before you do. TRQ is committed to offering the highest quality aftermarket auto parts that are engineered for peace of mind. Thanks for using and viewing with TRQ.